Well, it happened again. We got gypped out of another fall, straight to winter. I thought I was gonna get to sneak out before the blizzard came, but it's not looking so hot right now. The high today is actually, well, it never gets above 32 degrees. So we're making ice, baby. But in the meantime, this awkward time of year where it seems too nasty to get out in the boat, no safe ice, there's still walleyes to be caught if you're willing to bundle up. You'll probably be the only one at the ramp. I have not been out pre-fishing. I've got nothing dialed in. I haven't been here in a month, but that's what you guys are here with me for, right? Let's figure out what they want, see if we can get a few to eat, and uh, beat sitting on the couch. Let's do this. First type of thing I'm gonna check here, looks like water temps are mid 40s actually, which is warmer than I thought, is uh, shallow transitions, sand to rock. You can see right here, it's a little finger that points out into deeper water. It's bare, it's kind of a sandy bottom, and then all of a sudden you get that rock line. And I'm gonna do a little essing back and forth near this transition line, because especially late fall, and I mean like, if you're coming out early ice fishing, if you can find these transition lines, that's where fish are. And it's way easier to find now with side imaging than it is to try to find by drilling 200 holes and using underwater cameras. Here's that line again. Ideally, what we would see is fish right on the edge of it. I mean, there's one right there on DI, right where the rock stopped. I've seen a couple off the edge on side imaging. Definitely not loaded, but it might be enough to fish. Take a couple swipes here. Okay, I'll start easing with the trolling motor, but you can see rock out to my left, sand out to my right. We're gonna ride that line, that transition, and cast diagonal up and bring it across. And that's where those fish should be riding. So, sucker minnows would kill it this time of year, but there's no way I'm reaching my hand in and out of a pail of minnows and having wet hands when it's in the 20s. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is, a lot of the times, plastics, it's more of a reaction bite. I'm slowing things down. This is still a quarter ounce head, but it's a bulkier plastic. But the key here is a straight tail. I don't have a paddle tail or a curly tail or something with tons of action. I want something that's a little bit more subtle and it's gonna be a little more glidey and lifty versus darty and trying to get a reaction bite. Actually, there's already a couple fish on side imaging before we're into those rocks. So better get this down. never catch one on your first cast bad luck i don't care if you eat seven bananas in the boat with me don't catch one on your first cast I'll try one a little higher up on top of the rocks because i haven't been able to get anything to go on the edge graphing it's probably just cold and like mm -mm. Not ready for that. Oh, flip him! <laughs> Man, I paused, big time paused, because I was adjusting my jacket and the camera, and he ate it when it was just sitting there. He ate it perfect. About to lose a finger here. Yes, love it. And it's definitely not a giant. Ooh, it's cold. But what this does is this gives me the first piece to the puzzle. That fish bit when I actually had worked the bait a couple times, let it sit there. I was adjusting the camera in my jacket, picked it back up after probably 10 seconds and that fish was munching on it. So I gotta slow down, I need to relax. Woo. All right, he's got friends. How did we fish before spot lock? Today's the calmest day out of the last month. It's 
still can't imagine not having it. Slow down. Goose Frava. Still not sure why I both flipped that thing. <laughs> Who am I talking to? You know, I guess I should mention, I do my leader material a little bit different for this later cold water fishing. I also kind of switch up my rods. I'm a big, extra fast whooping stick rod guy. Extra fast, medium, or medium heavy sometimes even, with that real fast load for snapping plastics, and especially when you're trying to pop these baits out of weeds and stuff. This time of the year, you're not doing that. You're not snapping it out of cabbage. You're not trying to snap that reaction bite. So I actually, it's like one of the few times I bust out a medium light, fast or even mod fast, little softer tip. Because some days they don't bonk it. Some days when the water's in the forties, they just kind of pick it up and hold it. And so it gives you a chance to mush up that tip a little bit and make sure it's a fish and you can feel them before they feel you. There ties in the mono eight foot floral or eight foot leader too. Just that shock absorber. It's uh, it lets you get away with more errors than if you weren't using it. With that softer tip, this is a 7.3 medium light. You can see how it loads up. And if you're a sucker minnow, pitching jigs with suckers kind of person, this is like the deal. But this time of year in that cold water, I will bust out that softer rod for plastics as well. That way, if you're doing a, you know, a little one foot pop and you start to go up and you feel it motion up, you can pump the brakes instead of popping it and it feels you and spits it. Ooh, I don't know. <clears throat> that rock felt pretty bitey. Face is cold. Why would anybody shave their beard off this time of year? What an idiot! Carry on my wayward son. There's no wallas here anymore. Pause. Pick up slack. Pause. Oh, pop. Pause up. A pause. All the little fish with the pumped up fins Better run, better run, better outrun my moon eye All the little fish with the perked up fins There's a thumb Oh yeah That fish crushed it Yeah, not gonna boat flip that one Wow. That one actually smoked it. Jeez, oh. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Look at where. Hey. Open up. I was going to say, look at where that bait is if you'd open his chompers. Look at where that bait is. Sitting there on a nice long pause. And I just felt it go thunk. Oh, it's just barely skin hooked in there. There we go. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Perked up for what? threw it out there finally I'm trying to slow down and I was just sitting there for maybe two three four seconds and felt it just dunk and that fish had that bait so far back but super subtle presentation with a subtle plastic you don't have to use sucker minnows this time of year I only want my hands getting wet and cold if I catch a fish this one's actually called a rib fin bigger bulky body that slows that bait down and it's a real subtle action i have it on a quarter ounce of emc moon i had quarter ounce is like the perfect weight for 15 feet or less 
and I fish the same type of thing in the summer, same head, but a little sleeker body. And then I'm more, I'm snapping, I'm trying to get that reaction bite to fool them. Now that the water's in mid forties, these fish don't have that same metabolism. They're still eating, bulking up for winter, but they don't want something that flies past them. It looks like a lot of work to eat. So I'm fishing it, I'm still snapping it, not snapping, but it's more of a glide. You know, a little one foot pop, and have that bait rise up off bottom and slowly glide down. Sometimes I'll do a bigger four or five foot sweep. And then both of those last fish, when I killed it and just let it sit on bottom and just sit there, be patient, wait, 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 and then thump, they pick it up and eat it. What a fun way to get your hands cold. <laughs> I always eye it up first so you can see where to poke that jig through. This one is exactly halfway in between that bump or that hump. And you know your plastic is laying straight. It's going to have the best action, most natural looking action coming through the water. If it's curled up, if it's stretched out, if it's at an angle, you're just not going to get the right action and you're not going to catch as many fish. If you're not using a bait where it's like recognizable where to poke it through, Measure it out, put your thumb there, and just put a little nick in the plastic so that you have a perfect hook every time. Like I said, this one I can see, it's right where the peak of that hump is. I'm gonna come through nice and straight as possible. Poke her out in the middle of that peak. With, the, with those big hook keepers that I like for plastics, I'll kind of scrunch this up. Instead of just pushing it straight on, I'll kind of ball it up and then engage the hook keeper in the plastic and poke it through. So I'm not tearing that plastic at all. I'm bunching it up so the keeper can slide in and then shoving it through. You'll see that little tip there. And you can use that until you catch your limit, basically, is how it's supposed to work. But then you can see that's nice and straight, perfectly on there. Every time, just by eyeing it up like that, nicking it, watching where to poke through. Man, the hardest part about this whole thing is just slowing down. No matter how many times I say it, I just catch myself picking up the pace, picking up the pace. There he is. Oh, nice hook set. Idiot. Well, we'll see if it'll come back. Shaller. Six feet, seven feet. Getting ice on the guides. What season is this? I feel like a terrible son. My mom is calling right now and I'm not answering. Sorry, mom. Found a rock. for the old bow and arrow trick. <laughs> I love when that actually works. That has saved me so many hundreds of dollars worth of jigs, my goodness. Instant replay there, if you get stuck, don't do it on wood, you'll just bury the hook deeper. But with rock, if you snap that line and as you let go, drop the tip, what it does is it just basically shoots line towards that jig and gives it just enough breathing room to break free or fall free. Just don't cut your finger while you're doing it. We're going to catch him on rock to sand transitions those transition lines because the first spot we pulled up to there was clearly fish sitting and working that edge and i just could not get him to bite for whatever reason i slid up on top of that little point and popped a couple of nice ones and missed a couple more and the only thing i can think of is those fish that are on that transition line right now for whatever reason are negative not eating and basically the shallower, higher up on the structure that fish are, more likely they're more active. They're there for one reason, right? They're there to feed. They're not just hanging out in seven feet of water. 
they're there because right now there's perch there, there's shiners there. As you get later and later in the year, there'll even be ciscos spawning there if your lake has ciscos, tula bees. They like to spawn towards the end of November and they'll push right up on that shallow rock and you'll see some really big walleyes come chasing them. But after catching those first couple and getting them to go up on top of that last finger, now I'm gonna start to duplicate. So I just hop to the next little point over and you can still see there's fish off to the right hand side kind of off of the rock more cruising. They're all over there, but I don't know why I can't get them to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate what I did in the last spot, slide up on top of this little rocky finger and cast up for those more active fish. You know, if the sun came out, maybe if it warmed up 10 degrees, I could get some of these ones on the outside to go. And I, I'm not ready to quit on them yet, but I am ready to take advantage of the ones that are ready to eat now. Oh, baby. Oh. She gone. There's no better feeling in the world than when they just bonk the line. Even when you got slack line bowed up in the wind and you can feel them bonk because of that braided line. But then there's no worse feeling in the world than when you go to set and it's just air. So, you know, I just mentioned how much I am in love with the bonk that you feel with braided line when you get a bite. And I don't know how you would fish in the fall without braid line because it's always windy, it's always cold, wearing gloves, your mind is thinking about all the things you should be doing instead of being out in the middle of a lake when it's snowing. <laughs> to be able to feel that bite, I just, I don't know how you could do it without braid. You know, if I was gonna pick one line to fish year round walleyes, any application, if I could only choose one, it'd be 10 pound suffix, a 32 braid because then you can switch up your leaders depending on what you're doing, what you're throwing, where you're fishing. And so normally when I'm pitching plastics for walleyes, I'm gonna use a 10 pound main line and I use an eight or a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. This is one of the few techniques where I will try to use a mono leader if I can. If there's not too many rocks where I want the abrasion resistance of fluoro. And now the reason I'm using mono, there's a fish right there is because it floats where fluorocarbon sinks, right? So I've noticed you get more bites with the mono, a long mono leader, because that bait has a different action. It's, it's, it doesn't cut through the water the same. Mono, the way it floats, kind of lifts that bait and it's a little bit more subtle action. I better scoop this guy. How often do you catch one when you're actually in the middle of talking? <laughs> I need proof. And so what I'll do is I'll tie in an eight foot leader. And now eight foot sounds long. Most people are using, you know, a three or a four. But eight's the longest I can get away with and not have that double uni knot go up into the spool of my reel. Because I got a seven foot, three inch rod. You got about a foot of line out or so when you're casting. So about an eight foot leader, you don't have to worry about the knot in your spool and it catching and snagging on itself and doing one of those casts where it goes <laughs> right down. There's just something special about that mono and the action it gives, that, that floaty, drifty action it gives a bait that you just can't duplicate. <laughs> and it worked for that guy, right? But I guess there are times where I'll even use a 10 pound mono. That, the new suffix advanced mono with the no stretch. It's so strong. It doesn't get the biggest thing for me. It doesn't get the coilies, doesn't shoot off the spool. This is the last couple years has been the first time I actually spool up a reel with straight mono and just fish it all summer. <laughs> and I love it, but like I was saying, when it's windy and cold and nasty, if you're not running that braided line, I just think you're gonna get bites that you never feel. Well, I don't know if you can tell this over my shoulder, but we're about to get a small blizzard, a medium blizzard. Not cookie dough or my personal favorite Snickers, but the kind that drops water temps even more than they already have. So I'm gonna sneak a couple more casts in here and then get out before they pull the dock for the year. But realistically, there's still a lot of good fishing to be had if you're willing to bundle up and get out. 
Maybe bring waders or muck boots so you can get to your boat. Now all I can think about is blizzards. But if you're still getting out in the boat, you're probably gonna be the only one out there besides a couple of crazy musky fellers trying to catch a 56 incher. And there's fish to be caught. Think about your early spring spots. Those fish will regress back to those like, those spring locations where you found them when the water was frigid before they were out in the weeds and you were snap taking them. Looking for sand to rock transitions. Edges of big flats, they're pushing back up. You can catch them as shallow as six, seven feet of water, easy. We caught some that shallow today and some of them have been out in this like nine to 11 foot rock edge. But they're up there for one reason, they're eating, right? You'll notice you'll catch bass, northern, whatever. Everything is up here doing the same thing, getting ready for a long winter. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button. And uh, man, I don't know, next time you see me, I might be on ice. Might have to sneak out and catch a couple crappies on a jigging wrap too though. We'll see, stay tuned.